Welcome back everybody and thank you for choosing Current Connected. In today's video we want to show you how to replace a cell on the user serviceable SOK 48 volt 100 amp hour pro rack battery. Now it is very rare that cells fail. We've sold a few thousand of these packs and have a just a couple that have ever had an issue. If you calculate that out, 80,000 or so cells out there having just a couple, it's a very low failure rate, but we wanna make sure this information is available should you need it in the future. Getting started, there are some tools you'll need. In our case, a Phillips head screwdriver. That will get you 90% of the way through this. Other than that, I have a pair of side cutters to cut just a couple of zip ties. And then I have a torque wrench, and this is set at 35 inch pounds, and this is necessary for properly torquing the cells when we reassemble the battery. So getting started, the first thing I'm going to do is flip the battery on its back, and that reveals three screws here on the bottom of the face plate. We'll want to remove those with our Phillips screwdriver. From there, we'll flip it back down and take our attention to the side of the battery where there are three screws on the left side, right side, and rear of the battery. Then once the screws are removed, before we actually get into the battery, you're going to want to make sure you remove any metal objects from your hand, such as a wedding ring. Now the lid simply slides toward the back and lifts off like this, and we have access to the internals of the battery. Now that I'm into the battery, here at the front by the BMS, there is a red wire with a connector that is wrapped in tape. That tape is just there to keep it together so that it can't come loose in any way other than when we mean for it to. This cable simply pulls apart and that cuts power to the BMS so that way this is safe to work on. From there, we can come back out to the outside of the battery. There are two screws on either side of the faceplate. We can now go ahead and remove those. Now that those screws have been removed, this face plate will just pull forward and it can tilt down. And you'll notice there are some connectors over here that run to the battery cells. These connectors don't need to be unplugged in any particular order. There's a little tiny squeeze tab on the bottom side of them. That squeeze tab will need to be squeezed and then pulled. Just note that there is some glue on here, so it may take a little bit of force to pull those. Now these connectors are numbered, so you don't have to be paying exact attention to where they came from. As you can see on this one, it says one on the side. And then this one right here has the number four on the side. Just note which hole they went into so that you get them in the correct order. Now, before we finish getting the faceplate removed, there is a step I like to take that makes things way safer. And that is to remove this bus bar right here between cell nine and cell 10. This essentially cuts the battery in half so that it's two 24 volt packs that are separated from each other. And to give you an idea on the layout of the cells, the front left cell is cell one. Then we go across the front row from left to right, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then in the back row, we loop back around nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So if you've been tracking a problem with a cell on the screen, that is how it will correlate to this pack. So you make sure you're replacing the correct cell. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and remove this bus bar. I'm just taking these loose with my number two Phillips screwdriver. However, you also could use a 10 millimeter ratchet and wrench for this, but uh, they're not super tight. They're again, only 30 inch pounds. So um, it's not the end of the world to take that off. Now, even if we had a short over here on the main terminals, nothing would happen because that link has turned this into two separate battery packs. The next step is to remove these two red and black cables, the black cable connecting onto cell one and the red cable connecting onto cell 16. And this allows us to remove the BMS faceplate entirely. From there, there's a handful of zip ties like on these large cables and on these little balance wires over here. Those can be cut with the side cutters. And once those large cables are freed, this entire BMS assembly can be removed from the equation. From here with all the zip ties removed, there's a little bit of wire loom right here that can simply be pulled off. And these balance wires should just pull apart 
one module and the other. So from here we have two bundles of cables, one for the front eight cells and one for the back eight cells. Just get those separated and now it reveals the screws that hold the modules in place. So here on the left and right side there are some Phillips screws that hold this group of eight cells in place. We can go ahead and pull those out. Now that I've removed the screws from this front module, we can simply pull it and it slides right out the front of the battery with all eight cells still intact. And we can take that and just slide it on out of the way. That leaves us with cell nine through 16. So in this example, I wanna change cell 16 just to kind of show you guys truly the process of removing all of this. Now, if you wanted to remove cell 16, you can't leave the front module in place because there's some tabs here on the side. And with those tabs sticking out like that, it prevents the module from being lifted out on its own. And with the screws removed, I can just slide this module all the way forward out the front. Next, we need to split this cell holder apart. And before we do that, we need to remove some of our bolts here on the cells that the balance wires are connected to. So I'm not gonna remove the entire bus bars, just the screws that those balance wires go to. And you don't need to cut the zip ties that hold the balance wires to the top of the cell holder because the cell wires will stay with this enclosure as it lifts off. All right, so all those bolts have been removed. Now we can turn our attention to the side. Down at the bottom of the cell cage, there are three Phillips screws in here that hold the cage to the base plate. Those then get removed. Now, since we're replacing this cell right here that was cell 16, I do need to remove the bus bar from that cell because it'll move over to the new cell. So before I remove this holder, I'm gonna take that bus bar off entirely. So with that bus bar removed and the screws in the side gone, now this entire holder with all of the balance wires lifts out. Now the first thing you'll be greeted by is some of these plastic separators. The one here on the end simply peels away and now we're down to our cell. We can go ahead and separate it from the other cell and take note of the orientation. The black positive terminal here on the right and the negative tan terminal here on the left. Now, you don't wanna just replace these cells willy-nilly. I highly recommend contacting our support department for some further information because you'll need to do a couple things as far as charge goes to make sure this new cell here is at the same level of charge as the old cells. Now, we take care of this before we even ship them out in the process of troubleshooting this with you. So if you're attempting this on, the on your own, you're gonna wanna look into lithium iron phosphate cell balancing and educate yourself on that otherwise I do recommend just contacting our support from there the new cell will simply go in place and the end cover will go back in place now there are these parts I was showing earlier that stick out you're gonna want to make sure those are the bottom at the very end of the battery otherwise the cell cage won't slide down over this end that goes back in place and then we install the cell cage in the same orientation that we took it out in terms of the direction the balance wires are going. From there, the three Phillips screws on each side get reinstalled. Once all the screws are in, we can now take both cages and install them back into the battery enclosure. Now it's just a matter of getting the screws that hold these cages back into the enclosure. And then from there, we're pretty much repeating the disassembly process in reverse. Now it's time to get all of these cell bolts reassembled and we gotta get the bus bars back in place. I wanna point out that these two bus bars here are different lengths. The longer bus bar is the one that went between cell eight and nine. So don't accidentally put that on the cell you replaced. Go ahead and get your bus bars in place and then start all of your screws finger tight and make sure the balance wires are below the washer and above the bus bar. You don't want to get the wires under the bus bar. Now we're going to hold off on this very last connection between the front and back until the very end and I'm also going to torque all of the cells together at the very end. So from here, we can go ahead and get our mess of wires here reorganized and zip tied back in place. Cool, so I got all of those zip ties back in place. 
Now we're ready to slide this back and reintroduce the face plate that has the BMS on it. The red wire coming off the face plate will go to the black positive terminal. And you want to make sure that this little balance wire goes on top of the heavy gauge ring terminal. And then from there, we can put our bolt into the cell. Just hand tight at this point, and then repeat the same thing with the black negative wire here going to the tan terminal. These cables then get secured to the little metal bracket down here with a zip tie. From here, we're ready to take that long bus bar I mentioned earlier and put it back between cell eight and cell nine. Then go ahead and run through all of the cells and just barely snug up all of the bolts. You don't really wanna torque these down with the screwdriver, just get them most of the way. And then we can come through with our torque wrench here and this is set at 35 inch pounds. And I recommend going through every single bolt in this battery, not just the ones that you tightened, just to double check that they have all been properly torqued. Now, be very careful because on an inch pound torque wrench, it doesn't take much and it really could be easy to miss the click of the torque wrench. So just make sure you don't go past the click of the torque wrench. Okay, so now all of the cells are torqued down properly. We can go ahead and get these balance wires put back into the BMS, taking special care to make note of the numbers on the side of them. So there was number one, here goes number two, then three, and then number four. Now the BMS can be put in place and the screws on the side get installed. Now that that face plate is secured, we're gonna grab that same red wire from earlier and plug it in together. Now when that happens, you'll make note that the screen lights up. So then once the screen is lit up, we can go into analog info down to cell voltages and we can check all of these. They all look within reason. They're all in the 3.3 volt range, some in the 3.4 volt range, but we're all good here. None of them are showing zero volts. And if we go into the BMS status menu, under BMS status again, if we go through all these, there's no errors and failure is not showing as true. So we know we're all good here. We got all of our connections right and we can finish putting the cover back on. So there we have it. This battery has been taken apart, cell replaced, put back together. From this point, you'll do whatever charging and capacity tests are necessary. Now, again, the scope of this video is not to tell you how to diagnose a bad cell, simply how to replace it. So I highly recommend, again, contacting support for any information as far as troubleshooting this and getting it balanced and back up and running aside from this cell replacement. Now, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Other than that, have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.